Most buildings look fake. This one was built from scratch inside Unreal Engine. Hello everyone. Welcome to part three of the Unreal Engine Environment Realism Breakdown series. In this episode, we're gonna focus on buildings. First, we'll start with an overall analysis. This image you see is a scene from Spider-Man 2 where I took screenshots directly from the game environment so we can analyze it. As you can see, and as I personally observed in this environment, the city is generally made up of a limited set of buildings and walls, and variety is created through small changes in each area. As shown in the images, several factors help create this diversity, including materials and window types, base trims that separate buildings from the ground, and dirt or damage in the materials, all of which contribute to a more believable city. Other elements, such as assets like gas or water meters, can also be used to improve the scene. On rooftops, adding items like signs, vents, skylights, or antennas helps differentiate buildings from one another. The next game we look at is Alan Wake 2, with its stunning graphics. The streets and sidewalks we built in the previous two episodes exist at a level where, by adding certain elements, we can compare our work to this game. As you can see, the buildings in this game have higher quality because the scene is smaller compared to Spider-Man, allowing for more detailed work. But is there some special secret behind this? My answer is no. We can achieve the same result by using high-quality materials, creating variation between them, and applying blended materials to our meshes, just like we learned in Part 2. The next important point to consider is whether buildings should be created as single, complete meshes, or as modular pieces that are assembled together to form buildings. Assets. Let's try this practically together. I've prepared an asset for you, and I'll show it step by step. Walls. In general, we have two approaches. Either the building is created as a single complete mesh that we import and use directly, or we build it using modular walls with high variation and assemble them inside Unreal Engine. Then, using different materials and tools, which we'll cover next, we finalize the look. As you saw in Lesson 2 of this series, in order to use vertex painting on a mesh, the mesh needs to have enough polygons. I tried to do this in an optimized way and prepared it specifically for you. Export Settings For exporting from Blender, I set the Transform options to apply Transform. With Y forward and Z up, and in the geometry section, I set it to faces. In Unreal Engine, to make sure pivots are correct, we enable Bake Pivot in Mesh. If meshes sink into the ground, it's because their pivot is located at the center. You can fix this in Blender by placing the pivot at the base. In Unreal, to adjust the pivot, hold Alt plus middle mouse button and click at the desired location. Then right click and choose Set Pivot. If a mesh is floating above the ground, you can press the end key to snap it to the floor. Building a shop. Now let's use these assets to build a small shop. I place the walls next to each other, then use taller columns to create space for the rooftop. As you can see, having wall variety gives us a lot of flexibility.
Finally, by placing rooftop walls, the shop is ready. You can select all meshes and, from the modeling menu, use merge actors to create a single new mesh. As you can see, the merged mesh still contains multiple materials, which is great because it allows us to assign different materials to different parts if needed. We can build many different buildings using the same method. I'll speed up this part so the video doesn't get too long. Multi-story building. For this building, we want three floors. I select all the walls, duplicate them, and move them up to create additional floors. We need to be careful to change the entrance walls accordingly. Details. Now we add cornices to break the midlines and make the building more visually interesting. You can clearly feel the difference. Just like before, for the top floor we use taller columns to define the rooftop. I merge this building as well and give a proper name. Now we have three buildings and using the same workflow, we can create infinite variations of buildings. Material. I don't want to go too deep into material topics in this lesson. And I want to use the same vertex paint material that we taught in the previous lesson. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch part two of this playlist on channel. Here, we have a material in which we use set material attributes. And for easier control, we converted each material into a material function. Then, using blend material attributes and the vertex paint alpha, we achieved our goal. Our material also has offset and tiling parameters. I have prepared a set of textures for you that are located in the same asset folder, and you can use them. You just need to import them and replace the textures of the previous material.
An important point is to rename your parameters to improve and better organize your material. I import and replace three different textures for the three existing materials. Now we create an instance from the material we built and assign it to our prepared building. As you can see, a problem appears. The concrete material is also applied to the metal bars, which makes things harder. That's why I prefer using modular assets. Anyway, we use our material and, just like in the previous lesson, by using vertex painting and different color channels, we give our building a more realistic look. I also create another material using different textures with the same setup to add more variety. You can apply many different materials to these buildings to increase variation. Try to add dirt and grunge at the bottom of buildings and where they connect to the ground, as well as in corners and under cornices, so the buildings separate better from the ground and gain more depth. As you can see, in the first step we already achieve a much better overall feel compared to before. After reaching a reasonably good result, we slowly start adding more details to the building. For example, we add cornices under the windows, then we add the windows themselves and assign materials to them. We can also use a simple mesh with shutter style materials to create a garage entrance or workshop door for the building, or even build a blend material for it and paint it. By adding doors and their frames, we define proper entrances for the building. All of these assets can be downloaded for free from the link in the description. You can enhance the building further by adding props such as awnings, air conditioners, pipes, rooftop chillers, and electrical boxes. One important point I should mention is that, due to the limited video time, I can't build all the buildings. In this tutorial, we'll focus only on this single building. However, by using the same techniques, you can create a wide variety of different buildings and enhance them with different materials and props to achieve much more diversity.
You can also add trash bins, security cameras, antennas, and finally window glass to make the building feel more complete. Of course, all of this depends on the environment you are designing. The more detail you put into your buildings, the higher the final quality will be. Don't forget, we started with a very simple building, and we transformed it into the one you see now. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to support the channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. See you in the next episode.